Welcome to The Doctor's Kitchen with me, Dr. Rupee. This is the podcast recipe for the podcast I did with Rachel Clarkson. She is a registered dietitian and she's also a specialist in a field called nutrigenetics, which is basically how we can utilize genetic material to guide our nutrition choices. Fascinating conversation. Make sure you listen to the whole podcast by clicking on the link down below in the caption. And I made for her a simple pea pasta with artichokes. Really, really easy. You're going to love this recipe. I'm going to be cooking you a very simple meal. It's a pasta. And I'm not ashamed to say it's basically made up of all the leftovers in my fridge. That's fine, it's the end of the week. <laughs> exactly. I've already made this um, pea pasta. I don't know if you've come across this before. Oh, it's gluten free? It is, yeah. It's um, made out of 100% pea, but the texture is brilliant and uh, the, the flavour is there as well. And it just it holds itself quite nicely. <laughs> I started in Manchester doing an undergraduate in biomedical science. That then took me into the area of inflammation where I did a research project looking at inflammation and disease, then realized that's the underlying cause of all disease. I started a master's in nutrition. During that time, we basically learned all about the molecular biology, biochemistry to do with nutrients at an almost molecular level. That then took me to a research project in something called epigenetics. Do turning genes on and off in the body alter the way that we function, I yeah. guess, in so simple terms. The thought that you can change the phenotype or the physical appearances that are passed off an offspring without a change in the actual sequence is just mind boggling for me. When I first came across that, I was like, wow. I really thought about the importance of being able to actually apply my nutritional knowledge yes. to a patient. So then I went on to do another course at King's in dietetics. Mm -hmm. like why, did, why did you get into dietetics? I'm always fascinated into like finding out the backstories behind people. Being very honest, when I started as a student in Manchester, I really fell into the student lifestyle of maybe not cooking a lot, eating maybe quite a few takeaways, yeah. maybe having a few too many drinks. It's sort of a right passage it, though, isn't it? Yeah. Then I realized, wow, my body's changing. My energy levels aren't great. I didn't have great focus. And so I thought I must do something about this. So I became yeah. quite obsessive regarding my diet and okay. active lifestyle. But unfortunately, I wasn't educated in nutrition. I just read a few books, I'd read blogs, yeah. I'd kind of look to these people who I thought were experts for advice and I really followed that. And actually when I look back at what that resulted in, I was low in energy, I was low in weight. What were you cutting out, sorry, before I So, forget. I mean, I cut out dairy, I cut out gluten, I cut out animal products. So how did you break out of that pattern then? So then I applied for a nutrition master's and that's when I actually realized the importance of nutrients for the body, normal body functioning, and really started to eat in a way that was healthy, you know, eating more plants. I was incorporating lots of different proteins, whether that be plant proteins and also animal proteins, just thinking about moderation really. Towards the end of the nutrition masters, we were encouraged to find a topic that we were interested in, okay. where we would carry out a research project in the laboratory and write up a paper. So naturally I was very interested in genetics because I'd already done it in my undergraduate. That's when I looked into the epigenetic modification of the iron sensing genes. We specifically looked at cancer liver cells and our recommendation for future research was to find out exactly which lifestyle modifications need to be taken in order to turn things on and off. We'd, we weren't exactly sure what, we just knew that methylation was the mechanism that caused things to be turned on and off. 
So future research future will tell. Research, <laughs> pretty much the conclusion of yeah. every paper I've ever read. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do more research in this. Exactly. I'm excited for the broccoli. Yeah. I was telling you before that broccoli has been shown to basically turn genes on that are to do with detoxification in the body. Yeah, it's really interesting so. that I, I came across a paper um, based in China where they actually use broccoli sprout extract and they think it's because of sulforaphane changing the methylation factors but um i think a lot of people think uh, in too much of a reduction so when it comes to detoxification mm -hmm. it's a very important natural mechanism yeah. but it's supported by micronutrients mm -hmm. found in food um mm -hmm. those phase one and phase two enzymes that we can talk about a bit later if you like thank you get into it it's really good good mm. Good. She loves it. Great. <laughs> if you want to listen to the rest of the podcast, hit the link down below and you can listen to our full chat on Acast or whatever your podcast player is and we'll catch you there. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to support The Doctor's Kitchen, make sure you subscribe right now, like this video and check out all the other videos we have right here. Also go to thedoctorskitchen.com. There are plenty of recipes and other products there to help you live the healthiest life possible.